I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. Yeah, I see it now. I'm laying it down. I know that I need you. I run to the Father. I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding. No reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon. My soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father.
morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to church this morning. If you're new this morning, I want to welcome you. We're so glad you've decided to join us or maybe join us for the second time if you're here after our Easter service a couple weeks ago. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad to have you. I want to invite you to stand if you're able to this morning. And we are going to begin our service with worship, filling ourselves up with the Holy Spirit so that we can be open to receive the message that we have in store for today.
To, to tell you, each one of you, that we believe this God who's faithful, whose promises are yes and amen. And he's faithful before our yes and amen. He says yes, he's faithful before we would be faithful or not, because we are his children. And like a parent who gives his life for his children, this is God's love that loves us unconditionally, regardless because we are child, children of God. So Moses was called by this God once. Lord talked to Moses, talked to David, called Mary. But he was faithful before the yes and amen. He himself, God, gave his yes and amen before that. And I don't know where you are in your life today, this morning. Maybe it's all dark. Maybe it's hard to believe this today morning but i invite you to sing this next song believing this is the same god this is the faithful god and his faithfulness is forever so you just sing lord i need you now i need you maybe you can't see it right now but i need you i need you because i believe this is your forever love that is going on and is coming to us this morning. So you can say, you can repeat these words as the song starts, as the worship, uh, worship begins. You say, I, Lord, I need you. I need you now. I need you this morning. I need you, God. I need you, Lord. Just the 
but I am feeling so full of the Holy Spirit right now. Oh my goodness. Yeah, go ahead, have a seat. Welcome, everybody. So amazing to join all our voices in worship like this. I see some new faces in the crowd. I see some familiar faces in the crowd. My name is Hannah, if we haven't met. And for those online, welcome as well. Now, part of that being filled with the Holy Spirit is, as you know, if you're a little clumsy like me, if you fill a cup, it overflows. I have a bad habit for doing that. So I want you to just, as we get filled with that Holy Spirit, think about our response to that. The same God that has resourced us in so many ways and in so many times in our lives is the same God that calls us to overflow our cup and resource others. So as we move into a time of offering, I want you to really lean into that feeling of overflowing love for everyone in this community, everyone beyond, and for God's ministry in this city and outside of this city. So I want to give you a moment just to reflect and just feel that, feel the pulse of the music. Think about the ways that God has resourced you and filled you in your life. It's just so amazing, isn't it, when you reflect? I'm gonna invite our ushers forward, and as I do that, I'm gonna invite you to have a peek in the seat in front of you. You'll find a green card in there that has our giving options on there. There's so many different ways, um, online, in person. We have baskets that'll be passed down the aisles. And if you do choose to give online, you can put a card in the basket so you have a physical thing, but not required. And just know that everything that you give here goes out into this community and resources so many things. Thank you so much to our amazing ushers. And thank you to everyone here. If this was your first time giving, or maybe your millionth time giving, know that you are just as blessed. Thank you so much. So, I wanna welcome you again. I know I've done it like two, three times already, but it's such a big thing here. We want everyone to feel welcome. Everyone is welcome, no matter who you are, where you came from. Uh, if you had a hard time getting out of bed this morning, if you jumped out of bed this morning, doesn't matter. You are so welcome to be here. If you're still in bed, very welcome to be here, enjoying your breakfast, whatever you're doing. Thank you so much for coming. And part of that welcome is that we want to get connected with you and things that you're interested in and people that you want to get to know. And the way that we can do that to get to know you and have you get to know us at MBC is by filling out one of our purple cards. And again, those are in the seat back in front of you, nice and bright so they're easy to find. We have a digital version on this side. You can see we've got a QR code. If you scan that with your phone, it'll take you to a digital version of this form. There's only four questions. So if you wanna write it out really quick by pencil, there's also a pencil in there. Just tell us what's your name, what's your phone number, What's your email address? And tell us a little bit about yourself. And we've gotten some really cool answers to that. We love hearing about all these, Jamie's nodding, all these amazing things. So, so happy to have you here. We're gonna learn a little bit more about how you can connect and the next steps from there in just a bit. But before we do that, I'm gonna say hello to all the kids in the crowd. Or maybe the kids at heart. You wave at me. Hello, hello. Yeah, okay, oh, we got kids at heart, great. <laughs> so, kids, welcome. I hope you're excited because you got a pretty cool program coming up today. Now, I wanna see a show of hands, and kids at heart, this applies to you too. How many of you have siblings? Yeah, almost everyone. I have four of them, can you believe that? Yeah, they're all older than me. So if you have siblings, you know that you love your siblings, we hope. You get along with them most of the time, you like hanging out with them, you think they're cool. But sometimes, maybe you don't think they're so cool. 
Uh, sometimes maybe they get on your nerves. Sometimes they use your things and they don't ask. Yeah, they get a little annoying. And sometimes maybe you fight. Yeah? I hope not, but we know it happens. So today in our kids' program, we're going to be learning about family feuds. <laughs> yeah, the word feud just means like a, a fight, like an angry little battle going on. So we're going to learn about Joseph and his brothers and how they didn't get along, they fought, but they did eventually make up. Okay, so if you're new here and you have your kid with you, your child with you, um, you can meet Ronnie outside in the hallway at the desk just to get them signed up for today, if you haven't done that already. If you are a kid, you can follow Ronnie. She's going to wave her arm in the air. She's here at the front. You can follow her out. We're going to be downstairs for our program, and we'll come back up later. So as you're heading out, I'm just going to offer a prayer for our kids and say, Lord, thank you for the kids. Working with kids myself, I just, they're so amazing, Lord. The things that you inspire them with, the ways that you're growing kids to be amazing adults out in this world is just so awesome to see. So thank you that you've brought them here. Thank you that you're gonna give them a really fun time downstairs and amen. Let's keep going here. So I'm gonna invite up uh, our good friend Sheila Howlett here. She's gonna tell us a little bit about the Rising Angels Tea that she's running here. So come on up, Sheila. Good morning. Um, I want to tell you, yes, about our high tea fundraiser that's going to be happening over in the meeting place room this coming Saturday. And uh, NBUC has been so kind to us for the years, uh, allowing us to use this space for the fundraiser. It is for a ministry called Rising Angels. Some of you may have heard of us already. We're an organization that supports women that have been affected by commercial sexual exploitation, which is often also referred to as human trafficking. And I know it's a, a very hard thing to think about. It's hard to think about that it's happening here. Um, and yet in reality, uh, of all the trafficking that's happening in Canada, two thirds of it is happening in Ontario. Um, and 95% of those people who are being exploited were born in Canada. Uh, it's a, it's a huge issue and it's an opportunity if you're interested in learning more of a, about our event to learn about the issue uh, to learn about the ministry what we're doing to assist women uh, we have two main focus one is to assist women in many ways physically mentally spiritually it's a very holistic uh, program to help women overcome their trauma and and reclaim their lives and uh, because our executive director is a survivor of 15 years of exploitation uh, we also provide training to other organizations to frontline workers and service providers to help them to provide the care that the women need so at this event which you'll see there's a little bit of information there and um, I have a table in the foyer if you want more information. Full out afternoon tea, fancy sandwiches, scones, desserts, uh, four different types of tea. Uh, we'll have um, information about what we do and also some of the survivors that we work with uh, will be uh, displaying some of their art and uh, performing artistically. We've got a silent auction. Uh, it's an amazing uh, time. We have two seatings happening. One is at 11.30, one is at 3. And uh, the only thing is you do have to buy your tickets in advance. So you can talk to me today or uh, go online or even pick up one of our little cards. And um, it's $45 a person. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to invite you to consider learning more about this issue and, and what you can do about it. Thanks so much, Sheila. Yeah, so please, on your way out, tables in the hallway, if you want to buy a ticket, it goes to support such an awesome cause. Speaking of awesome things, we got some life groups information coming up. So I'm going to invite Lydia and Kelly up to tell us about the groups that you can join. There's so many. Hello, everybody. 
I, I have to admit that this is my passion, is connecting people, and I have always feel that the best way to get to know people is in a small group setting, and that's what our life groups are. But I also, I know we always talk about life groups, but we never actually go over what they actually stand for because it's an acronym for something. And it stands for living and loving, insight and inspiration, friendship and faith, and encouragement and energy. So those are the things that you're going to get from having a life group, participating in a life group. And we're actually doing three weeks of a promotion starting today. And we do have a goal. We have a goal of adding, through the first quarter of this year, up till May, um, 55 people who are going to join life groups. And at this point, since January, we already have 35. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> so if you are not currently in a group, I encourage you to look at what's available. You can check that out on the, on the website. I think uh, through lifegroups or mbuc.ca slash lifegroups and see what's there. There's many of them. We also have a board at the back with some information and a little flyer that you can pick up from us that uh, we, we have back there if you can take it. It has a, has a QR code on it too, so you can go to the website through that. And uh, the other thing that's really cool is if you have a passion that you currently really love doing and uh, you want to share it with other people, whether it's reading a book or studying a book or studying the Bible or it's doing an, an actual activity, you can talk to us about starting your own life group. And uh, we offer support to all the leaders that run groups. And there's actually a training session that we're going to be doing in May on the 7th. Am I right, Kelly? <laughs> Um, and uh, so we don't leave you alone to sort of struggle through this. We give you some assistance with the technology and with how to successfully run your group. So look forward to that. Now we're going to talk about, as we are going to do for the next couple of weeks, a few groups. And there is one that we are going to show a little video about. Have you always wanted to learn how to stand on your head? If you come out to MBUC's dance group, we won't teach you how to stand on your head, but we will have a great time listening to some worship music, moving together, and praising the Lord. <laughs> Do you like that? <laughs> Hannah and I run that group together, and uh, my passion is next to having a wonderful groups is to actually dance. And you may see me moving around in the church because that's what I like to do. And uh, so we do different things every uh, other Tuesday night in the uh, downstairs in the room down there. And uh, this, week, this week we're gonna start uh, something that's really cool. We're gonna be starting to learn a little bit about tap. So, <laughs> Hannah's excited about that. She's the teacher. I love doing it, so if you, and you don't have to have proper shoes. You can just come in your running shoes and try it out. It's a very different form of dancing, and that's kind of what we're doing. And uh, now I'm going to pass this mic over to Kelly. She's going to talk about a few more groups. We have a few more groups introduced, so I wanted to call up, uh, oh, they're already up, Bob, <laughs> to talk about his, the slide. The slide, the slide's got you. <laughs> Hello. I'm so glad to be back here. We were down in Tennessee and this is home. But uh, what I'd like to uh, announce is that we have a men's group. And uh, one thing that this church has incredible men of uh, authenticity and uh, deep men, deep thinkers. So we get together as men, and men don't usually talk a lot, and we don't just talk about the lease, but we talk about everything in life and we we do praising and we do um bible um chapters and topics that we uh go over and we go deep and we uh, uh form some incredible bonds so if you're looking for some uh, guys to connect with 
And like I said, there are some amazing men in this church. We're all, they're all amazing. Once you get to know them, they're all deep. We get together at 7 o'clock on Tuesday nights. It's all online, so it's, we don't have to learn how to do headstands or things like that to be part of it. I cannot tap dance, I guarantee you, but maybe I should try and learn. Uh, it's so easy. To, we just log on online. Every guy is invited any age, 7 o'clock Tuesday nights. And... Uh, you're going to form some friends that will take care of you and look out for you for life. We are a close, bond-knit uh, group of guys. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> <I'm not saying. laughs> we have an order. <laughs> um, so I was just wanted to talk a little bit about the cycling group. Um, we meet Tuesdays and Thursdays, 645, and we go on the Tobo Creek Trail. Um, it's, it, it's any level, really. We don't we go over to Loafers Lake, but um, everybody's welcome, all different levels and different ages. Um, it's fun, it's a good way to connect. And um, we usually stop near Loafers Lake for a little rest and a little chat and uh, hope you can make it. If you're interested, you could go online and um, sign up or you could talk to me. Um, now I'm gonna pass it over to Doug. Hi everybody, um, well, I love the life groups. I currently run three myself and I'm part of two. So now I know which one I'm talking about. Uh, every uh, last Saturday of the month, except for holiday weekends, we get together and we do what's called a board game night in the sanctuary. And uh, what it is, just come together, bring your favorite uh, munchie to share. If there's a game you wanna play, bring it. Uh, we bring a bunch ourselves and it's just a fun night. Uh, you know, we just have a great time and I've got to know uh, a great many of people through doing this and like I say if there's a passion you have that uh, you don't see available in a life group then that's maybe God nudging you to start up one yourself so the next one is on the 27th of April and I hope to see you there <clears throat> okay thanks Doug you stole my thunder about the if you have a passion for another group that is great um, Anyway, come and visit us at the back and um, sign up. <laughs> Take care. everyone. Great to be with you here in person. Those who are worshiping from home online I want to celebrate a, a little bit of where we've seen God working over the course of this week. And, and this morning I was in the parking lot and Tom Hunt drove in and as he drove past, I thought, I thought in my head, that, that guy's a miracle man. So Tom's back. I won't go into all his story, but uh, God does heal and Tom is living proof of that. So Tom, we're just so glad you're back, that you're healthy, that you're well. The other side of the, of the you know, life is uh, so good to see, and I hope you don't mind me doing this, but so good to see Navin and Emily with their third child, a baby boy who was born how many days ago? Eight days ago. Welcome to our newest member. Awesome. That's so good. That's so good. Um, and, and just, just uh, we're coming to the end of our, our semester around Alpha. And uh, this, this semester in particular has struck me in two ways that I've seen God working in ways beyond what I've seen before. And the first is, the first night that we had an Alpha, when I walked in the room, I didn't know over half of the people. And I'm like, that's amazing. The other piece is to see the people who are taking Alpha really being a part of what's happening on a Sunday morning as well. And I just want to celebrate that and give God thanks for that. It's good news. Good news. Okay. We are starting a new series, as you hopefully know, called You Are God's Masterpiece. And uh, as we think about this series, maybe think of a story, uh, and you may have heard this story. It's a great little story about a, a young girl who was drawing and at the kitchen table. Her mom walked past and said, what are you drawing? And the little girl says, oh, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the mom says, well, nobody knows what God looks like. And the little girl confidently says, they will when I'm done. <laughs> Hoping, praying that throughout this series, as we dive deep into the book of Ephesians, that we will have the same kind of confidence, that we will see ourselves as God sees us, and that we'll recognize how valued that we really are. We're talking this morning about being a child of God. And I just, I think sometimes 
life can really, really, really wear us down, you know? And, and it's, it's, though we might even understand it intellectually, it's sometimes hard to actually get that we are a child of God, that we are God's masterpiece, that we are incredibly valued. I mean, I mean think about it for, for a moment. We are a part of God's creation. So we have a few slides here on the screen just to, to give us a sense of how beautiful God's creation is. We, we have the galaxy, just incredible stuff. How many people enjoyed the eclipse on one day? It was amazing. It was amazing. We, we have the beauty of God's creation, the landscape, the geography, the mountains, the majesty of the mountains. We, we have the, the sea and the, the, the water, the world that is deep underneath the oceans. It's, it's incredible when you stop to really think about it. We have the animal kingdom and, and just loving these incredible animals who can be, become very much a part of our life, let alone just seeing God in all of that. And then we have us. We have people. And, and so just to be thinking about, do, do we see ourselves as part of God's creation? We are God's masterpiece. Do, do we see ourselves as beautiful as when we see some of those other pictures that we saw up there? I would, I would love it, if you're okay with this, to, to, to turn to somebody around you and say, you are God's masterpiece. And at home, you can do this as well. well go ahead. You can, you can talk. You, can, you are God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. Okay, that, that was all you were supposed to say. This is hard to get you back. <laughs> yeah. The, the next part, I, I just want to confess, uh, give you a heads up, is, is a little harder. And that is to point to yourself and say, I am God's masterpiece. W would you please do that? If you're okay, if you don't, don't like, you're, you're welcome to be here whether you do it or not. So don't, you don't have to. But, but it would be really awesome um, if you could do that. If we could all do it together. One, two, three. I am God's masterpiece. If that felt really hard to do, keep praying about that. You're in the right place, both today but also throughout this, this series. We're going to look at the, uh, at the book of Ephesians, like I said, for the next couple months. Uh, Ephesians, just a bit of context around it. Uh, the town of Ephesus was a trading center, so there were people coming and going. It was a hustle and bustle kind of place. So Paul saw it, no surprise, as a great place to do evangelism, to share this Jesus and this good news that he'd found with other people. And so part of the, 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 the reality of, of the book of Ephesus is Paul is really trying to give the Ephesians, as the early church, a sense of God's purposes in their life, which I think is really exciting for us as we come out of Easter and, and always be thinking about what's God's purpose for, for my life. But it starts with this, this unifying message of we are children of God, and we are God's masterpiece. So let, let's going to break it down this morning into, into three sections. And, and the first is just the first few verses. This is Ephesians chapter 3, verses uh, 1 to 2. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I really simply bring that to our attention this morning because we want to look at the whole book of Ephesians, and we often miss this greeting that Paul gives. If you look at Paul's letters, this is the same kind of greeting in almost every one of his letters. He says, here's who I am. I'm grounded in Christ. I'm an apostle of Christ. I'm on a mission. I'm an ambassador of Jesus. He says, you, this is us, you are saints. You are good people who God has a beautiful plan for your life. And then he says, Grace and peace be with you. What a beautiful way. Like, just imagine the heart that, with which Paul comes towards the people who he's trying to lead. So just may we feel that as well this morning. Now we're going to get into a longer section. This is verses 3 through 6. And uh, if you've read the letters, Paul's letters in the New Testament, uh, it, it can be sometimes challenging to read. Paul... Um, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know that there was a, uh, there's some really long sentences that say a whole lot is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to try to break it down to, to simplify it this morning. So don't, don't worry if you don't catch everything in what you, what you read here. Uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. 
Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Again, you may want to go back this week and, and read through the passage for this morning because there's so much there. But in that little section, just want to really focus on, on two things. And, and that is this idea that we are chosen and that we are adopted. Because if we're thinking in, the, in the, the sense that we are God's masterpiece, that we are children of God, those are really, really important concepts. So the, the fact that, that we, are, we are chosen, that God has, has chosen us, is, is really quite remarkable. Again, back to those pictures. Like, we're part of God's creation. We're part of God's masterpiece. If, if you've ever done a, a piece of artwork, like that little girl who we were talking about earlier, you know, you know how significant it is. So that's how God sees us. God has chosen us. God wants to be in relationship w- with us. The gospel is really clear that, that Jesus comes and breaks open the doors so that this good news is for all people. So d- let's just kind of get that on the table right away, that, that it's not some are chosen and some aren't. God has come in Jesus for all. And still sometimes I think we struggle with that. I, I don't know if, if, if anyone remembers this commercial. It's definitely dating me. It's, it's, it's way back. Um, and it's a, it was a Canadian Tire commercial uh, about a, a kid named Albert. Who, uh, who, and if you, if you remember it, like, it, it was pretty powerful. In fact, in fact maybe a little bit of homework would, would be Google Canadian Tire Commercial Albert. Like, it's, it's so moving. I should have got it for us for today, but I'll, I'll do my best to describe it really briefly. So it's, they're on the pond. They're choosing teams, and everybody's getting chosen except for Albert. And, and the way it finishes is the two captains say, well, he's your brother. You take him. <laughs> and then it fast-forwards, and it's this huge arena, stands are packed, and you see coming out of the, out of the, out of the ice, Albert. And the, 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 the fans are cheering, Albert, Albert, Albert. And then they showed the, the, the coach talking with the, with the announcer, and he says, wow, everybody wishes they had an Albert on their team. <laughs> so if we had time, I'd, I'd cheer every single one of your names here and at home, including my own. We are all chosen to be part of God's masterpiece. This idea of adoption is interesting, too. It's so clear in this passage eh, that that we've been adopted into this this new family and that we're all chosen for adoption. And um, it, it brings up some questions, doesn't it? Like, what does it mean for us to be adopted by God, by Jesus, by the Holy Spirit? Uh, is there an inheritance? And there is, actually. We're going to get to that. We're going to get that throughout this whole series. Uh, what is the process of adoption really like? I think we experienced that a little bit last Sunday when we had baptism with four people whose stories were so clear that God had been pursuing them, reaching out for them. That's part of the process of being ad- adopted. I, I know some people have, have come from family backgrounds where it hasn't been great, where it's been really challenging, really traumatic sometimes. And so there is this new possibility of being in a new family that's really, really important. In, in John chapter 14, verse 18, Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. So if we're feeling orphaned on our own to know that God's desire for us as we've been chosen is to also be adopted and to belong and to connect really, really important things. We, uh, we see this happening these days as God revives our church. It's, it's really powerful to see. Seeing and hearing more people inviting people, which is really awesome. That's how the good news is spread, that's how the, the family grows. And just a really practical tip, what I'm seeing and hearing from people is when you invite someone, if you really want to help them, invite them to sit with you when they come on a Sunday morning. Because it can be scary to walk into a church for the first time. I come from a family uh, that's really 
I'm blessed. I'm just so blessed. My parents probably watching today from Mount Forest. Hi, Mom and Dad. Um, and yet still, even for me, it's been really important to be adopted into a family, into a community like this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know how to say it. Like, this isn't just some job that I do. This is a life that I get to live, that we get to live. It's, it's such a blessing to be part of this family. Feel your care, our care. The other piece that's really exciting about being adopted into this family is that we really are spiritual brothers and sisters. We are siblings in Christ. Like, we, we rely on each other. We share our resources. We, we lean into each other. We're, we're not alone. Like, it's incredible. If you've experienced that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's so cool that it goes through the camera, through technology, to people who are wherever they're worshiping from this morning these days as well. But we are a family on a mission. And that's kind of exciting, too, that we've been adopted into that. And part of it is as we get involved, as we as we use the gifts that God has given us, however we've been created as God's masterpiece, we experience this new life, this purposeful living in a way that is also part of what it is to be adopted into this family. It's, it's even better than free tote bags that are being given away today. <laughs> Nothing against the tote bags. Okay. Let's, let's, Let's carry on with the passage and just, just want to offer a couple more significant thoughts to what it means to be children of God as God's masterpiece. This is Ephesians uh, verse, chapter 1 again, verses 7 to 14. This is where we're going to get a bit into that, that inheritance that we're given as those who are chosen and adopted by God into this new family. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. This is big stuff we're talking about here. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, had believed in him, you were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. We were singing about that earlier. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption, as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. What I'd love to do here is just focus on two things in, in, in that section. The, the one is this gift of grace, and the other is the gift of the Holy Spirit, both part of this inheritance of what we receive as children of God, as God's masterpiece, as those who have been adopted into this family. So the idea of, of grace is, is one that we'll probably spend a lifetime trying to really figure out because it's so counter to generally the way the world works these days. The idea of, of grace is that mean, it means that we, we don't have to earn God's favor that, or approval, that it's already been given simply as being a child of God. So it's not something that we have to achieve, but something we simply have to receive, right? Maybe, maybe say that with me. It's not something that we have to achieve is something we simply have to receive. Yeah. We looked at Jesus' baptism last Sunday, if you were here. Matthew chapter 3. If you remember, there was this incredible blessing at the end where, where, where Jesus hears, you are my child, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. You know what's really cool? Is that happens before Jesus does any of his ministry. So Jesus doesn't earn God's approval, God's value, God's love. He 
receives it in the gift of baptism. And it doesn't have to only come through baptism. It can happen every single day where we open up our eyes and receive this incredible gift of grace to, to know that we are, we are loved and valued no matter what. Not because of what we've done, not because of what we're gonna do, but simply because of who we are and who God is. That's what that is, that's, that's grace. It means freedom, it, it means forgiveness, it's a very powerful place to live. <laughs> Incredibly powerful. It's like a secret, it's like a secret weapon. It really, it really is. And, and still, like, I think it's hard sometimes to, to grasp it because it's so significant. We might even get it intellectually, but, but to feel it, like, what is that like? Maybe consider a time where you really felt loved. It might have been many years ago. It might have been just this past week. But consider when you just really felt loved. That is grace. That's a gift for all of us. The other gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this is part of what we're given. This is part of the Easter story. Uh, just to very quickly review, we, we celebrated Easter a couple weekends ago, that God had come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, born among us, Christmas, experienced life, teaching, healing, dying on a cross, out of this incredible love for us and for this world, and then resurrection, new life. God raised Jesus from the dead, and now Jesus gives us that same Spirit. That's his promise to us. And so we also have the same power in us that raised Jesus from the dead. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's incredible. Here, here's just some names to help us think about what the Holy Spirit uh, might, might mean for, for us. A counselor, a comforter, baptizer, advocate or partner, strengthener, our helper. I love that one, our helper. Now, the, the Holy Spirit, as we know, we don't, we don't see the Holy Spirit, but we see the impact of the Holy Spirit. So it's like a, a breath. Like, we don't see it when we take in a breath, but we feel the, the strength of that. We, we feel different when we, in fact, everyone just take in a deep breath, if you would. That feels good. Uh, the Bible often refers to the Holy Spirit as breath. So that's a, that's a helpful analogy, hopefully. Or wind. Again, we don't see the wind, but we see the impact of the wind. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone is watching the Masters this weekend, but it's been really windy there the first two days. And for, personally, it's kind of fun to watch because these pros are putting the ball in the water and you're like, oh, they do it too. You know? <laughs> but we don't, we don't see the wind, but we see the impact of the wind. So we, we may not see the Holy Spirit, and that's why it's important to take some time to think about it, that this is God's gift as people who are God's masterpiece, children of God, chosen and adopted to be part of this family, given this gift of grace with every breath we take and the power of the Holy Spirit. So we'd like to take a, a, a moment to pray and just encourage us to receive the Holy Spirit this morning, this gift that we've been given as God's chosen, all of us, and to receive it in, in whatever ways that we we need it this morning. We were singing about that earlier, that, Lord, I need you. And this is, this is not just something that happens on a Sunday morning. This gift of the Holy Spirit is available to us 24-7. Just invite us to be still for a moment, to breathe, to rest, to rest in the God who has come in Jesus The God who, the God who made us, the God who loves us, gave everything for us, the God who is, is with us all the time. We say, come, come Holy Spirit, come.
For those of us who, who feel on our own, feel lonely, feel like we don't belong anywhere, just that that story would be reversed today because it's there's another story that, that God has, has come and is reaching out for us and calls us in, calls our name. It says, you never need to be alone again. I am with you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. For, for those of us who are struggling with, with decisions, I mean, to the rest of the world, they may not seem so big, but to us, they're, they're big. And we're worried and we're not sure what to do or where to go. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Be, be our counselor. Be our guide. Be our, our helper. Give us clarity and confidence and courage. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Some of us today have, have wounds that are so deep we can barely name them. Sometimes we don't even know they're there. Sometimes they're just too heavy and hard and we want to avoid them. And yet you can heal. And so we say, come Holy Spirit, come do your thing. Come Holy Spirit, come. Wherever we are in life, whatever stage that we're at, whatever age, there's no question that it, being part of your family, you've chosen us to make a difference every single day. We are a family on a mission. And each day when our eyes open, come Holy Spirit, come tomorrow morning when our feet hit the floor, give us a sense of renewed purpose, vigor for life, that we can be blessed by your love to go and love others wherever we go. Come Holy Spirit, come. Be a, that strengthener. That, that whatever it is that we're, we're heading into as we move into this week, the next chapter and season of our life, that you have already gone before us. That you're reaching out to us, encouraging us to take your hand and come and you will strengthen us with every single step. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Have your way. Be our light. We open up ourselves today with great thanks and praise that you've chosen us, <laughs> that you're calling us, and you got some great things in store. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand and join us as you're able to.
continue our series, You Are God's Masterpiece. We will be taking up a, a bucket offering to uh, fight against uh, coral bleaching. As followers of Jesus, uh, our responsibility is to take care of our environment in this world. Uh, we're part of that, and this is one of the ways that we can do that. So bucket offering it for that cause. Next Sunday, you can bring coins, you can bring bills, you can bring checks. I'm sure the way they do it online, and you can also bring your books in one more, one more week. Yeah, those uh, baskets for the books are in the hallway. If you're looking for them, you can just bring them in and donate them there. Thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. There's so many things happening today, so don't forget to hang out with Lydia and Kelly at the Life Groups table. Find a Life Group that's for you, or maybe start a new one if you don't see one that you like. Um, make sure to get a ticket to the Rising Angels High Tea in the hallway, and come and see us at the front for your free tote bag. They say, wonderfully made. And that is what you are. And that is what I am, as hard nice. as that is to say sometimes. <laughs> nice. um, if you're online and you'd like us to reserve a tote bag for you to pick up later, just let us know in the chat, or you can email um, office at mbuc.ca or me, hdawson at mbuc.ca to let us know to keep one for you. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you have an awesome week. Yeah, let's just receive let's God's blessing prayer. as we go. Murray's also in the prayer corner if you want some prayer this morning. Let us pray. May the God who has, has made us, created us, knows us, loves us, Jesus Christ, the one who came to give us new life, freedom and grace, and the Holy Spirit, our guide, our, our enabler, our friend, our helper, be with us, lead us, love us as we go from here, blessed to be a blessing. Amen. 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 God bless everyone. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. is now satisfied here in your love hey. oh there's no And I'm not afraid.